Okay, so I am going to review uh, a bunch of different OBD2 readers for your car because the one that I made before, the dash command video, I made it for fun in the car because I was bored and it has a ton of views now and if you search dash command in Google, it's the thing that pops up. Who knew, right? So I'm going to review a bunch of other ones. I just bought this one. This one is called OBD, OBD2 Fusion or OBD Fusion is what it's called. It was $13.99 up in Canada anyway. You need a Wi-Fi OBD reader to connect to one of these. If you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, you can use Bluetooth. You can't use Bluetooth on an iPhone. I don't know why. Some boring stuff. But I have the, I bought it off Amazon. It's the ELM327. It seems to work. You connect it through Wi-Fi. You're supposed to set a static IP address uh, so that the it can connect directly to the app um, on, the, on your iPhone. But I didn't have to. I just plugged it in, connected to the Wi-Fi, and it automatically set an IP address that seems to work because it is connecting. As you can see, it's doing that right now, which is good. So it's reading my vehicle information. Now I've used this app a little bit now. I've played around with it. And to be honest, I find it a little bit laggy. I don't know. I don't want to comment and say the app is bad because I'm sure if you have a stronger connection between your Wi-Fi dongle <laughs> and your app, it's probably a little bit better. But for me, it lags quite considerably. So now it's connected. So you've got a bunch of options on the main screen here. Um, if you are confused, click on the little question mark down here and it will take you to a connection setup help, which tells you how to do everything, which is really nice. It's all pretty well laid out. It, under, it explains how the uh, static IP address is supposed to work in case you're wondering. All right, so on the main page, dashboards, this is where everyone wants to go because this is what kind of looks cool, right? This is what shows you all of the stuff that's going on in your car in a cool visual format. All right, so it just gave me a tip there when I logged in. Okay, so this would be, I would think, the main page here. So now, as you can see, it's not picking up the information right now for all of the electronics. Yeah, so it's giving me my mass airflow up there, but it's not giving me my RPM, and it was giving me my RPM in a, a minute ago, and it's not giving me any engine temp. So I can change the size and location of each of these. So let's do, let's do a bigger RPM. Well, I guess I can put it in manually. Let's say, oops, nope. Oh, for the love of, um, 70, I don't know. Let's see what that looks like. Ah, okay, so it just made it bigger. That's pretty cool. I wonder if you can move these around. Roll, oh, bring to front, drag and move. Oh, I see. So you can select and drag and move however you want. I think that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to go with that. Oops. Dashboard. Be really nice if it would connect. Oh, there it is. Ha ha. So now we have the RPMs up there, which is kind of cool. Now I'll show you what I was talking about with it being a little bit laggy. So it's giving me accurate. RPMs based on what I can see on my dashboard. Just over 600, it's a little bit high actually, I think it's because I have my AC on. So if I give it a rev, you can hear it. Car sounds cool. And, nope, there it kind of moved a little bit. Wow. So I think that's probably my connection. Um, I don't know if you need a better quality Wi-Fi dongle, but hey, there's my engine temperature popped up and my battery is there. It's telling me how many volts my battery is at. That's good. 13.3 when it's charging, that sounds about right. So my battery's in good shape. That's nice to know. Um, fuel rate is there. Okay, so here are a bank of sensors, O2 sensors, which are really important for emissions and stuff like that. Uh, they're reading nothing right now, as you can see. My fuel rate just popped up. Mmm, come on. Do things. Come on. Okay, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, boost would be cool if I had a supercharger, which I don't. But, oh, there's an O2 sensor and there's the other O2 sensor. There is giving me my information. That's good. So this is important if you are really getting into tuning or you're really just interested in what's actually happening inside your engine. 
for a clear understanding of, uh, especially air to fuel ratio, which I don't see here because figuring out if you're running lean or if you're running rich is really important for diagnosing vacuum leaks um, or other fuel issues you might be having in your engine. And I'm not seeing that information here. Yeah, it doesn't look like you can. I don't, don't quote me on that, but from what I can see, at least it's not intuitive on how to set it up. So let's see some more information. Back to the main screen. I like the interface, it's easy. Back and forth, very simple. The dash command interface doesn't make any sense. You have to like hold your finger down for a second and select menu. This is much more intuitive. Uh, monitors. Okay, so use the menu button and select a readiness monitor. It's reading the data. Aha, okay, so, yes, yeah, so it's giving me, there's two things here, available and complete. Okay, so you can see at the bottom, this one, my heated catalyst, I guess it can't read the sensor, I don't have the sensor, either or, but it's not available, therefore it's not complete. What you don't want to see here would be available, check mark, and complete, X, that would be bad. Uh, so back onto the main page here, under settings, you have a lot of options. So it's best if you put your car in. So you log in all the information of your car, especially things like engine displacement, um, wheel size, in order for it to actually do, so a lot of the stuff, it isn't coming from the computer. It's coming based on calculations. So how fast your vehicle is going, what your tire size is, it does some math calculations and it'll give you something like fuel economy or speed or whatever, horsepower or something like that, right? So you have to it, input as much accurate information about your vehicle as you can. That might mean Googling a lot of information about your vehicle. So diagnostics, this is a really important part of any of these types of apps and this is the main reason why some people would actually buy an app like this this one though for $13.99 you'd be paying for the extra features the cool dashboard so it kind of feels like you're in you know a, a really advanced car like a GTR or something like that right so it's automatically trying to read the trouble codes and it is taking its good old time any day now. Maybe driving the car around is going to make it better. You can actually, when I'm going over bumps, you can see the chassis flexing in the camera. See how it's going up and down like that? Because the, where the seat is, where the camera's mounted on the seat relative, hey, the engine codes worked. There we go. So no trouble codes are detected. That's a good thing. Anyway, let's go back to the dashboards and see what it looks like when we are driving. Okay, let's see how accurately it can do speed and things like that. It's still not giving me my RPM very well, but we will see. It's still waiting to read the battery. There's the RPM. Okay, driving away. It is giving me no mile per hour reading. Oh, there it is. And there's my RPM jumping up and down. Okay, I would say that the RPMs are a, a few minutes or a few seconds behind and they're not consistent. Um, but okay, so here's an example of what this app looks like if it were working properly. And I think it's pretty cool. I actually like the design. I don't mind the colors either. I'm not a big fan of that red right there, but you might be able to change that if it's customizable. I would imagine that you can. So there you go. That is this app working. Now compared to Dash Command, it doesn't have nearly the amount of features that Dash Command does. And from my experience, Dash Command is a lot more responsive, especially with that basic skin that comes with the app. This, however, is a much more intuitive interface. It's cleaner design. At this point, honestly, Dash Command is looking a little bit archaic visually. But this one, I, I think, is it's nice and it's clean. It looks good. You know, it reads your error codes. It gives you uh, your O2 sensor data. It gives you your dashboard data. I think it's supposed to if it were working. 
I think it's a pretty good app. I'll give it like a thumbs almost all the way up. That is OBD Fusion.